I talk a lot about things like intentional spending, intentional shopping, and how to use your money in the absolute best way to get the most out of it, especially when it comes to things like shopping and curating your life with the things that you love and value. And you can do all of the right things before you decide to make a purchase. You can budget for it, you can put it on a wish list and wait, you can calculate your cost per wear, you can style it in five to 10 different ways before you buy it. But sometimes, no matter what you do, some of those items just end up being a miss. So in today's video, I just wanna share with you some clothes that I regret buying. Some of this video, I think is just gonna be a pure roasting of myself, like what was I thinking when I bought this, while other pieces just didn't end up working for me. But regardless of any of these pieces or any mistakes that we made when we shopped and when we bought, I think that feeling of buyer's remorse or regret can be turned into something positive. Turn it into a learning opportunity. Sometimes you just can't really know until you buy it. But I learned a lot from these pieces. I learned a lot about my own style and what it is I like. And now I know not to make the same mistake again. So, you know, it wasn't a complete waste. So let's get into it. When it comes to my decluttering, a lot of my friends and family get first dibs and then whatever they don't want, I'll either sell, consign, or donate. So a lot of these pieces I don't have anymore, but uh, we'll do our best here. Number one are these Madewell Chunky loafers. I would say these were kind of a slow burn because I usually tend to gravitate towards a slimmer silhouette and so I thought, you know, everyone's kind of doing the loafer thing. I really like the look of it. I like how people pair it with like skirts and dresses and jeans and you got these cute little socks popping through. I love the aesthetic of a chunky loafer and how people are styling it. I also really liked that these were not too, too chunky so they wouldn't feel like too much like a Frankenstein shoe on my feet personally. Um, and I really liked the patent leather detailing of these so that they would give a little bit of kind of like a shiny texture. I bought these around fall or winter of last year. They were on super duper sale. They were a really good price and it was actually my first purchase from Madewell, so I was really happy with them when I bought them. They were pretty comfortable, not too stiff, not too heavy, but I just, I don't know, man, I can't do a chunky shoe silhouette for myself, at least. I love it on other people, but whenever I do a chunky silhouette, I just feel like I'm being instantly weighed down, and I have thicker legs ankles and calves to begin with. Um, so when I throw on a really chunky silhouette, I think it just makes me look really truncated and cuts me off even more than I already am. I'm not that tall, I'm five foot five. So when I go ahead and add a chunky shoe to that silhouette, it just starts to feel really, really heavy for me. And I even asked Alison Bornstein to help me style these loafers in particular. So when I had my styling session with her, I will leave the video right here if you wanna go watch it. And if you wanna see what a full one hour session looks like with her, you can check it out on my Patreon. She did give me some really great ideas on how to style them and to basically balance the heavier silhouette on the bottom with something slimmer on the top, like a slimmer pair of jeans or a straight pair of jeans. But because my legs are thicker and things like that, I prefer to have a more flowy, kind of wider leg silhouette on my bottom. And if I'm going to create balance in an outfit, I prefer to do it with like a slimmer top or a slimmer blazer and a slimmer shoe. So even though I liked the outfit that she helped me style, it just felt like something that I wouldn't feel really great in if when, when wearing it out in the real world. And so I ended up decluttering these, I ended up selling these and um, yeah, you live and you learn. I don't want a chunky loafer. I just prefer a slimmer shoe, so there you go. Which brings me into worst purchase number two. We have a theme going on here, and that is these New Balance 530 sneakers. I bought these to be a shoe that I could wear you know, everyday outfits with, and for things like walking on the treadmill and things like that, but in my reality, these are my treadmill shoes. I like them, they're very comfortable, love a good New Balance sneaker, but um, as a fashion statement, the whole dad sneaker, Jerry Seinfeld sneaker thing, again, these just feel very bottom heavy. And these aren't even like the chunkiest of the chunky dad sneakers that New Balance offers. They're super comfortable, they're, it's like walking on a cloud. But for the same reasons that I ended up decluttering the chunky loafers, is the same reason that I find myself not reaching for these if I'm going to be styling a sneaker. I prefer something with a much more slimmer silhouette again, so I have been wearing the heck out of my Sambas. I swear I got my cost per wear to like less than a dollar on these, probably, I'm probably in the cents at this point. And it's for the same reasons. I actually styled these New Balance in um, a video in my latest 
recreating Pinterest outfits video. And I just like, looking back at the footage too, I'm just like, it just feels like I have Kleenex boxes on my feet. So these are gonna help me get my 10,000 steps in a day on my treadmill. These are like my indoor treadmill shoes. And I don't really wear sneakers or running shoes at the gym. I get a lot of questions about that. So I typically work out in socks, but that's because it helps with foot stability and foot splay. So I actually used to work out in Converse. Um, but I found I was like wobbling all over the place and my trainer was like, take off your shoes, try, just try the same move without any shoes on, without shoes like squishing in your feet like this. And I felt so much more stable and so much more strong. And when you do a lot of weightlifting, that's, it's good to have, to use the full power and balance of your foot. So, um, yeah, I don't work out in shoes either. So <laughs> they're good for walking, but, uh, not, not for my outfits in particular. All right, so next is a purchase that I've actually had for quite a long time. I have worn it multiple times, but lately I just find myself feeling a little bit off in it every time I reach for it. And it is my Durf Avenue button down shirt, specifically in this blue color. And I think I know what it is. I think it shrunk, I think it shrunk up because it just feels way too short on me every time I go to style it. I also have two other Jerf Avenue tops that I decided to buy in a size small. And this is the only top that I bought in an extra small. And I just find I can't really tuck it in very well unless I'm wearing something super duper high-waisted. I'm kind of bummed out about this one in terms of how it's worn and how it's shrunk. Otherwise, it's still in really, really good shape, but I just feel like the proportion on this one isn't really working well for me anymore. I don't like wearing it open and it's a little too short to tuck in based on the bottoms that I tend to like to wear. So I don't know, let me know about this one. Let me know what you think. Am I just seeing things? Am I Delulu or is it off? I'm realizing I prefer my button down shirts to be a little bit longer. I like to have a little bit more length so that I can wear them open, kind of do a half tuck if I want to and have them feel almost like a jacket or a cardigan that's a little more flowy and loose. I find when it's just like a little bit too cropped, it's, it just keeps, I just, I just feel like it's hitting me weird and it, it's, and it's always something that I end up taking off later. Let me know, let me know your thoughts. And next is this Milk Maid dress. If you saw my video styling the clothes I bought and love but never wear, then you will see this dress in action. Um, and I asked you if I should sell it or if I should take it to a tailor and have her turn it into, separates into a top and the bottom because I really, really liked the skirt, but I put this dress on and I was just like immediately, no, it didn't feel like me at all. It felt way too bohemian, way too sweet. I felt kind of like a milkmaid a little bit, but when I say definitely not my style, it's also something that I couldn't like edge up and sharpen to make it feel like a little bit more of my style. I tried styling it with some biker boots. I tried styling it with a leather jacket and it just wasn't working for me. It just wasn't hitting. And it's because of this super high neckline. Coupled with the fact that this dress is a bit more flowy, billowy, very kind of girly, feminine, a little bit bohemian silhouette. It's just a lot of fabric. There's a lot going on. Um, and I just felt really closed off um, and just too covered up with anything that I tried. It just, it just didn't work overall. I think my sister will really like this dress. So I'm probably gonna pass this dress on to her, but if she doesn't want it, then the majority rules I'm going to sell this piece probably on my Poshmark. The other problem too is that it just didn't hit enough of my style words. My three style words are minimal, sporty, and sharp. And I think within a piece itself, if you can hit at least two of your style words, then I think you're going in the right direction. One piece doesn't always need to embody all three of your style words all the time. That's when creating outfits and using accessories can bring in your other style word to create that sense of balance. But this one, the only thing I could say about this one is that it's minimal because it's white and it doesn't have, like it has that ruching, but otherwise it's kind of just like a straight, poofy, simple dress. So in my mind, maybe I thought it was minimal, but it didn't hit sharp or sporty in my style words. And I found I just couldn't make it work with my other accessories to make that happen. So yeah, it was just a miss. Next is my red Tibby cardigan. I have been trying to style this baby all year. And I think I have just come to the conclusion that one, I am not a cardigan girl as much as I want to be a cardigan girl. I am not, 
give me my blazer, give me a sweater, sweatshirt, hoodie, zip up, button down shirt, but I just don't like a cardigan, clearly. <laughs> and two, some of the feedback I get from this cardigan is that the red is a little bit too warm for me. I think it brings out a lot of the pink and redness and kind of rosacea I have in my skin. So I tend to kind of look almost purple and purpley pink and red whenever I put it on. Um, and it, because the red is so close to my neck, it just brings that out. I did have a color analysis done by Sina of Use Less. So if you wanna see that video and learn more about color analysis and my own color palette, then you can check that out. But she color typed me as a deep, cool, and clear. This red is a pretty clear red, like it's very, very bright and vibrant, but it's almost like an orangey red. So it does lean a little bit more warm toned and warm tones in general for me kind of look like I don't really wear colors like yellows. I don't wear warm greens, warm browns, things like that. I tend to stick to the cool toned family when it comes to color that I do decide to add. And I think this cardigan is just like a little bit too small. I have gained a lot of mass and strength in my upper body. So it just looks like a little bit shrunken on me. I'm not mad that my biceps like fill these out quite a lot, but it doesn't feel comfortable and I don't like especially my layering pieces to feel too tight. But I am not going to be decluttering this piece because I think what it does serve for me now is basically a way to add layers and depth into my outfits. So I really like the idea of, for example, tying, tying it around my waist just to add like a little bit of a pop of color. It's almost like I'm using it more as an accessory. I've tied it onto my bags, almost acting like a scarf. I have worn it as a scarf because it's so paper thin. I still kind of get that problem of like the wrong color near my face, but sometimes I just, I don't care. I'm not too fussed about that, especially walking around in the, in the real world. So that's how I found myself wearing it, but wearing it as an actual layering piece, just it's not so much, didn't really work for me. Um, and you live and you learn. So that was me trying to experiment with color. At least I did it, right? Thumbs up for that one. And finally, any yellow gold jewelry that I bought. I'm wearing a yellow gold necklace right now. It blends into my skin. I think I'm more pinkish to neutral undertone in my skin, so silver definitely looks better on me. It definitely pops on me. But like a yellow gold like this, which was trending, you know, back in like 2018, 2019, 2020, with those like chunky gold necklaces and things like that, I got a lot of those pieces to add to my jewelry collection. And I still will wear them on occasion, but only when I'm wearing something higher neck in like a black or a white so that it can stand out against me. So I'm not gonna throw out this jewelry, I'm not getting rid of it, but I find when I wear it against my skin, it kind of just like disappears into my skin and just doesn't, it doesn't make me feel bright and like well accessorized. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. So I think there is definitely a thing to skin undertone and to gold versus silver. I don't always completely follow those rules, but I wish I just understood a little bit more about that before I added a bunch of chunky gold necklaces and earrings into my collection. And the problem is too, is when I wear it with black, I always just end up feeling like The Rock, like this photo from The Rock, or like Julian from Trailer Park Boys. So um, yeah, very specific occasions when I do wear those super goldy yellow golds. So those are some pieces that I bought from my wardrobe with, you know, the best of intentions, but just didn't really end up working out for me. But as you can see, I did learn something, I think, of value out of every single piece. And that's really gonna help guide my decision making in the future when I do decide to add something new to my wardrobe. This is also something I found really helpful as a reminder when it comes to getting caught up in the trend cycle and seeing trends repeatedly over and over again because there is that element of trends where, for example, when they first come out, you absolutely hate them. And then, you know, over time it kind of grows on you and it ends up in your wardrobe. So I think instead of focusing so much on the fact that maybe we wasted money or feeling really guilty from buyer's remorse, take it as an opportunity to learn a little bit more about yourself and your style and use it as armor to not make that mistake again. So let me know some pieces that you bought that you regret or that you at least learned from. Leave me a comment down below. If you like this video and you wanna see more, please give it a thumbs up. If you want even more bonus content, check out my Patreon and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye, thanks for watching.